Okay, so first, let me just start by saying, no, I did not make the footage change just to show off this mat, but yes, I am absolutely going to show it off. I love this thing. It is my favorite mat I have ever had. I spent... I spent a month designing this thing. I was gathering the panels. I literally went through every fucking chapter in the colored manga so that I could get all these panels. And oh my God, it was, it's, oh, it's so nice. I love it so much. And I bring it to every tournament now. Uh, I am going to link the people who printed it. It's an Etsy print shop. They uh, do custom designs if you want it. Um, it's not sponsored at all or whatever, but if you want to go, they're very nice. And I do recommend if you're trying to make your own custom mats, uh, again, very friendly, very professional, and they did an amazing job with this thing. Oh, it's my favorite. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to rant too much about that. Let's just roll the intro. Hey there, my name is Waffles the Asian Yen Bear, and this is Nami Explained, where I've done the research and playtesting so you don't have to. Now, this is the third Nami guide I've made, and I want to just focus this one on changes and new information so when we get to concepts or skills that I have already covered in another video, I'm going to put the relevant video and timestamp on screen so you can just go check that out, come back here, and those who have already seen those videos, you don't need me to rehash those points. Now, Nami is my personal favorite leader if it wasn't obvious already, but that is because she is just really unique. She's the only mill deck in this game, and instead of trying to take your opponent's life, you're on the defensive. You're trying to draw, you're trying to trash cards from your deck, she is super easy to start, but you're going to find that becoming good at using Nami requires a lot of nuance and a lot of practice. You'll find that very small changes to the deck list will massively affect how well she does in competitive environments, and unfortunately, little mistakes that you can make when piloting her that really wouldn't be a big deal with other decks will be heavily punished. On top of that, doing well with Nami requires knowledge of what kinds of cards the opposing leader usually runs, as it will determine decisions you make later in the game. When it comes to the meta, 08 was a really tumultuous time for Nami, at least in the East. The big three were Red Purple Law, Luchi, and Anel. And while Anel was just a free win and we did have advantage versus Luchi, Red Purple Law's bottom decking and character spam was a huge issue. Thankfully, the legal scholars have been kicked out of the western meta, and that leaves our badass navigator in a position to chart a course for the top. Now, exact Nami builds are usually determined by the meta, and since it's going to be different, I'm going to take some guesses as to how things will turn out, just starting from nothing. So, early on, I think we're still going to see a Nell. I think we'll have Luchi or Moria as the black control deck, black yellow Luffy will be strong, and then I think we'll see Reijus and Namis. After some time passes, I think Reiju may fall out a bit as Black Yellow Luffy gets more popular, but I think in response we're going to see Bonnie rise. After that, I think maybe there will be a period where people start to use Blue Doflamingo in preparation for when the starter deck drops, and then once the decks drop, I think we're going to see Dofi, uh, Pudding or Katakuri as the dominant yellow leader, Reiju rising again, uh, Mono Purple Luffy and Yamato, and maybe Smoker, but I think at this point there's not going to be one dominant black leader. All this to say, while I am going to present what I think is the best Nami build for this set, I'm going to be mentioning changes we should be making to work around the meta as it evolves. Now, there is one last preload thing that we have to go over before we get into the decklist. I am well aware that the West tends to prefer the Kuja engine. I have done a lot of experimenting with it, and I think I've come to the conclusion that it's because the engine is easier to understand, and because it's an overall faster deck. However, I think that there are several problems inherent to the engine that make the ceiling for that deck a lot lower. Mainly, Margaret not having counter, and having to drop the amount of Deathwings or just completely cut it entirely. Now, Kuja will work in certain metas, but I found that I had much better results when I switched to Impel down. It might be because I play Nami a little bit differently, so keep that in mind as you're going through the video. But that is why we are not using the Kuja engine for this decklist. But okay, that's enough prologue, so let's just jump into the decklist. Now, the core cards are the same for any Nami deck, so we're just going to speedrun them. All of them are four copies, and you, if you want a more in-depth explanation of each card, check out this video. So we've got Kaya, Pilaf, Desert Spada, Usopp's Rubber Band of Doom, Gum Gum Gavel, Love Love Beam, and White Snake. Okay, now for the interesting parts. Let's start with Impel Down. We run two Buggy Searcher. 
basically at the end of this we're going to have 14 targets which is not enough for buggy to be consistently reliable or we would be running four copies however he's good for getting one dawn for one card early then later he's good for helping to pull out a deathwing or extra counter not to mention he is going to be helpful for setting up your end game so here is going to be a time and place mainly it is in the beginning when you're just trying to grab a card out of the deck for a cheap and later when you're trying to get Deathwink or when you really just need some extra counter. Four Impel Down All-Stars. Now some are going to argue that this is still a core card and I mostly agree but I'm going to place it in this section because A. Uh, some decks are electing to leave it out and B. It's searchable and that makes it a lot better to run in this version. We can choose to grab it when we have a way to remove it from our hand so it's not going to be an issue in the late game. 3 Mr. Ones. This has been a staple in Nami for a while, but we've specifically run 3 because of Gum Gum Rain. We can use him to grab things other than Gum Gum Gavel, but then we're going to be spending 2 Dawn for dropping 1 card, which really isn't terrible, but we can make that trade with other cards like Love Love Beam and get an extra 2k counter on top of it. We have 3 Deathwink. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck and I'd absolutely run 4 if I could, but unfortunately, we have to run one copy of one specific, very stupid card for the Nami Mirror, and we'll get into that later, but let's just focus on Deathwing for now. This is Sanji's Pilaf with 6k counter and a good trigger. And what makes my playstyle a little bit different from others is I value hand control a lot more, because I feel that this is an incredibly good card, and being able to get the max value from it is super good. And that's why I really don't like running things that we can't remove from our hand at will, like Margaret. On that note, the last four targets are two Mr. Twos, one Prince Bellet, and one Gum Gum Rain. The Mr. Twos and Prince Bellet are searchable 2k counters that we can just toss from our hand whenever we need, and Gum Gum Rain is a zero dawn event that can remove a random dead card from our hand for 3k counter. Basically, we run these because if you run more than one copy of Rain, it's going to end up dead in your hand too often, and it is important to have some 2k counters, so if you have a large hand, you're not going to overdo it on your dawn to drop events. Remember that if you're using a Deathwink, that's going to be 3 Dawn. It's uh, 6 Dawn if you had to use a peel off on your turn, and that's only going to leave us with 4 Dawn, which is enough for Love Love Beam and 2 1 Cough. So ideally, you'd have Desert Spotted to see the top 3, Gavel to Trash 2, and Deathwink to then draw. And that's going to be 16k encounter for the turn, if we're assuming you didn't already have a card to Trash for Gavel, and you chose to draw one of your 2k counters, which is the whole point of this. Basically, if you see that you've got a 2k counter on top and you have a card that you already wanted to trash for gavel, you can basically put the 2k counter on the top of your deck, use love love beam, draw into the 2k counter, use gavel to drop the dead card, and then counter with the 2k, then deathwink, now you draw another 2 for deathwink. Uh, it might have been a little bit confusing, so I'm making sure hopefully to show the scenario in the footage, uh, so that makes it maybe a little easier. Also just to really quickly add here, you can choose to just run three of just Prince Bellet or three of just Mr. Two if you prefer, but having both of them in your deck makes it harder for your opponents to guess how many of each we run if they look at our trash. So if they're trying to calculate lethal, they're usually going to be looking at your Dawn, but if you happen to run 2k counters like this and they see only three in your trash, they might think you run four copies of each and then basically it makes the math harder for them, which is the whole point. After that, we have our other techs. We have two Boodle. With no more red purple law, Boodle got a lot better. It's two costs to block one attack and trash a card. And if you're facing a black deck, you might not be able to get the block off, but they still have to KO it. So that is two dawn for one card. He is very helpful in aggressive matchups and especially against black yellow Luffy. But if the meta moves more towards blue decks, you're going to need to change the slot for something else. If we're seeing a lot of decks running Gravity Blade, I think changing this for one more copy of Buggy and another copy of Snake Dance is the way to go. Speaking of, we are running one Snake Dance. It is a great card that lets you move a character, mainly Kaya, back into your hand, but if we're facing a meta with a lot of KO removal, it does become less helpful. I think overall it's a great card, but space is tight and we can't really run more than that. The 2 Dawn cost does matter later in the game when you're trying to get a Deathwing off. And since this doesn't directly get you cards out of the deck, it is a lower priority. 2 Apis. I'm not a huge fan of Apis, I've railed against her in other videos, but you really need to run her for the mirror, and she's at least a 2k counter, so she can still be helpful in other batches. 
If you're stuck with two cards you don't want in your hand, you can play her and she will almost certainly get the search off because we have 20 targets in our deck, if you include the other copy of Apis, uh, since she can search herself. And lastly, we have Hangerson. And no, I am saying this through gritted teeth. Hanger is only here because we have to run it for the mirror. Using him will force your opponent's Nami to attack into it, which allows you to then use a bunch of counter events to mill from your deck. Uh, if they don't attack him, then you get an extra card each turn. And since other Nami decks run him, you actually have to run him as well to have a chance in the mirror. Otherwise, you kind of just auto lose if they get Hanger. Uh, sorry, it sucks. I don't like it because he's, well, he can be a little helpful. He's not that great in other matches. So really, if you are 100% positive that you are not going to face any other Namis, and again, 100% positive, or at least like 95, remove him. He is a two cost for one draw, which would be good, but you do have to drop a card from your hand. So if you really want to use something similar, use Ipan Matsu. He's also a two cost, but he mills instead of draws, and you don't have to trash a card for it. Uh, just don't try it on the sim. It's glitched to where it doesn't actually let you do that, but since the wording is up to one slash character, the ruling would say that you can choose zero and you still get the mill effect. I'm assuming it just doesn't get fixed because no one actually uses Ipan Matsu, which probably makes him pretty low priority. Alternatively, you could also just run another copy of Boodle to get one mill and a block for the same cost. However, if you are 100% certain that you will face another Nami, 100% certain like you, your friend plays Nami and they're in the tournament with you or you see them with their Nami beforehand, drop the Snake Dance, add in another Hanger. Having two Hangers wins you the mirror easily because you're going to get to it much faster. But specifically, I do only run Hanger when I play on the Sim since it's really rare for me to run into other Namis in person, even with all the traveling I do for tournaments. Okay, so let's talk more about changes that you can do as the meta evolves. If we start to see more decks go towards KO removal and Reiju dies down a little bit, one to two copies of Belmare is an excellent card to include. She is one of the most dawn efficient cards that you can include in the deck, and I talked a bunch about her in my 07 video, so you can check out these timestamps for that explanation. But Reiju's Niji will just send her to our hand, and things like Doffy will probably just ignore her until they can bottom deck with Gravity Blade or Red Rock. I love including Belmare, partially for the lore part, but also just because she provides so much pressure in the right metas. If it is the right meta for Belmare, we can drop a Snake Dance and one copy of Mr. Two, although that part is more up to you. But it really does have to be the right meta for Belmare. If the meta does move more towards bottom decking, dropping Gum Gum Rain for another Apis would be good. Basically, in bottom decking metas, it's important to have more search to move the Kayas that get bottom decked back up. And if, by rare chance, Nami becomes the top deck in the meta, run double Zeph, so these two Zeph on the screen. Or at least OPO6 Zeph and maybe Usopp. OPO6 Zeph does nothing for you against other decks, but it is a perfect way to win the mirror. Now, let's just run through a couple cards I didn't choose here, and we're going to start with the ones that are a bit controversial first. Brick Fist. It's searchable with Buggy, but the problem with it is that it stops your draw chains and it cannot be used on your opponent's turn. This means that if you accidentally draw it while you're trying to get a Deathwink off, oops, you draw one less card. I also don't really expect Kaya to stick on the field reliably enough for Fist to be worth it. Margaret. Zero counter, we're not running Kuja. We can get the same general effect for one less Dawn, and it comes with 1000 counter. The difference is that we just mill the card with Boodle instead of drawing it, but I think the draw isn't worth having another possible dead card in the late game for the same reason I was saying about Brick Fist. If it stops your draw chain because you draw it when you can't actually play it, then that's a big problem because now Deathwink is getting you one less card. Red Rock. This is a great card specifically for Bonnie matchups that can get the 9C Zoro out. Otherwise, it really doesn't do that much and it costs 6 Dawn, so you only get Four for the next turn. That's going to leave you too vulnerable and it is something that I would only add if you're dealing with a lot of Bonnies. Carrot wasn't common in the Eastern meta, but the same thing would apply if Carrot becomes really common too. Femur, uh, Perfume Femur, not searchable in our deck. It's a worse all-stars and it is a dead card in your hand. It ups your trigger count, that's cool, but I don't think that alone is worth it. 2k Mihawk, same reason as Belmare. 
I don't expect him to stick on the field long enough to be worth it. I did use him in 07, but I think that this specific meta won't be as good to him. Putting and Gion. Anti-Nami cards, but we can run better anti-Nami cards if that's our intention. Otherwise, they don't really do much for our endgame against other decks. Usopp. He's rising in usage in 09, but you are not going to be getting Usopp off against any opponent that is paying any attention to the game. Uh, any good opponent is going to be saving their 2k counters over the course of the game, and at most, you're going to be hitting for 11k, which is really not that hard to counter out of, or god forbid your opponent has a blocker. Also, he's counterless. I feel like maybe I'm missing something niche, but that's kind of all the main cards. So let's talk about the mulligan. When it comes to the mulligan standard, it hasn't really changed, so you should check out the 07 video from these timestamps. However, I do want to talk about the general philosophy over the game, since that's kind of something I've been thinking about a lot in 09. When we talk about Japanese Nami players, they tend to look at piloting Nami as an equation. How much Dawn are you typically going to have access to? How many cards can you get out of the deck? Then, they try to build their decks to be able to remove about 40 cards within 35 to 36 Dawn. And it's kind of a similar concept to what I've been talking about for a while when I talk about the Dawn efficiency of your cards. You want cards that get you more cards out of the deck for less Dawn. Kaya, for example, is a 200% return since she costs 1 Dawn and gets you 2 cards. However, it kind of got me thinking that we as Nami players do tend to leave a lot of Dawn wasted in the early game. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say your opponent is on their 3 Dawn turn and they swing 8k with their leader. If in your hand you have Gum Gum Gavel and Usopp's Rubber Band, you could just defend with Gum Gum Gavel and get 2 cards out of the deck. However, you know that your opponent cannot attack you again. They have zero Dawn left, they have no other characters on the field. And I think a lot of us have been looking at it like we should save that Usopp's rubber band for later in the game to defend. But I also think there are times when it's important to overdo our defense to make the most of the Dawn we have. In this case, I think using the extra Dawn to use Usopp's rubber band isn't a bad thing as the Dawn would have gone unused when your opponent ends their turn. This idea was something I originally thought would just cause us to run out of hand resources, but it's a strategy that actually works very well with this version as we can continue to use Deathwings and Pilafs to replenish our hand later. And I like playing Nami as a defensive deck rather than a rush to mill everything, so I do tend to play a little less risky. But I think the turning point for me happened when I realized that the longer the game goes on, the more Dawn our opponents have access to as well. And this didn't used to be as much of an issue as I designed previous decks to be able to continually handle 10 Dawn turns, but as I've been playing more in OPO 9 and more of these really big 10 drops are coming out, Roger, Shanks, Buggy even, it's made me start to think more on it and this is kind of the balance I've come to. When you are considering how you want to change the deck, I think you need to keep the 35 to 40 Dawn standard in mind. And I've designed this deck so that assuming we get 2 draw or 2 mil 2 triggers, which is the average, we can mill out the deck in 37 Dawn. That is under perfect conditions, but it's going to look like this. Kaya and Gavel are 8 Dawn for 16 cards. Pilaf and Wink are 21 Dawn for 15 cards. Usopp's Rubber Band and Buggy are 6 Dawn for 6 cards. White Snake, or you can substitute this for Boodle or Love Love Beam, is 2 Dawn for 1 card, and you only need one of those to go off in this situation. Now that's not adding in the draws for turn, which would be 6 if you're going 2nd, which in our scenario would give you 40 Dawn, or 5 if you're going 1st, giving you 35 Dawn. If we include those, and we assume we're going 2nd, that means we actually only need one rubber band or buggy to go off, and the total becomes 30 Dawn for milling the whole deck in 6 turns. Now of course, real life is not going to be that perfect, and sticking to this stubbornly will mean that you can't adapt, which is why you need to make sure you are t thinking about this, but being flexible. So why am I telling you about it? One, if you can do it perfectly in 30 Dawn, then in real life you should be able to do it consistently around 50 or 60 Dawn. Two, I think that if you change cards in the deck, it should be in a way that doesn't take away from this goal. For example, when we add in something like Red Rock, even if we have it at the right time, that is 6 Dawn that could have been used to draw or mill something. And you need to weigh whether sending the Zoro back to the bottom of the deck is worth putting your end goal further away. Are you gaining more from sending it away than you lost? You also need to weigh that against the probability that it's actually going to be of use when the time comes. 
Like I said, if you're not often facing Bonnies or other decks with 9C Zoro, then even if you have it in your hand, it's not doing anything. And on top of that, there's going to be a portion of your games against Bonnie where you mill it. And that's why the tech cards that I choose are all ones that I feel help us get to that goal instead of slow us down. We've got things like more impel down targets so Buggy hits more often. We've got Snake Dance so we can reuse Kaya and get two cards out of the deck for 3 Dawn. But only one copy because the probability that the situation will arise is low and otherwise it's just a 2 cost for 4k counter. And hopefully that makes sense and I hope that if you're changing the deck list at all that you're considering that as kind of the goal in mind. And there's one other piece of advice I want to leave you with before we go to the matchups. And this is a ruling that I actually didn't realize until recently since, as you guys can probably tell, uh, while I can understand what the cards do, small ruling interactions are hard for me to in Japanese. And while you can use all-stars to trash two cards from your hand and remove all-stars, I didn't realize that you can just use all-stars without doing that. You pay the dawn, you play the card, but you don't pay the trash cost and you get no effect. But... You got it out of your hand for one dawn, and that is a huge deal if you're needing to set up Deathwink and you just don't have any other way to get rid of this. If you're in the same boat as I was, you know, keep that tip in mind moving forward. Very small tip, but very helpful later. Okay, matchups time. Now, normally I like to cover the top 10 leaders and then some of the noteworthy matchups, but since this is a new meta, I'm just going to cover any of the ones where we have to do something different than how we would usually play. There is no specific order here, so check the timestamps if you're looking for how to play against one particular leader. Animal Zoro. Oddly enough, uh, this doesn't play too differently from old Zoro for Nami, and so what do I mean by that? Well, one of the pros of using Animal Zoro over the old one-cost Zoro is that they can spam out characters on their opponent's attack. But we don't attack, so instead they have to run a bit slower of pace than they usually would, which maybe makes it slightly faster than old Zoro. But one notable difference here is that they are more likely to swing 7k, as it's a little bit easier to power up their characters than it used to be with things like Hiking Bear. This means you want to put a little bit more priority on the 4k counters than the 2k counters. Don't swing at the characters if they leave a Dawn open, but if they don't, then just swing with your leader at these uh, OP08 Chopper or Hiking Bear. Blue Doflamingo. Uh, post starter deck, he plays like a worse version of Red Purple Law for us. It's a lot of character spam, a lot of 5k characters, and it does have a touch of bottom decking. Most Doflamingos will not run four copies of both Gravity Blade and Red Rock, so while you should be aware that the characters can be bottom decked, you shouldn't avoid playing things that get you at least a 100% return on the Dawn investment. So things like Kaya, Buggy, and Mr. One if you plan to grab Gavel, so that's two Dawn for two cards, uh, and Boodle is okay early, but once they hit seven Dawn, you probably shouldn't play him unless you also have a White Snake in hand. Basically, what's going to happen in that situation is they're going to go to bottom deck Boodle with Gravity Blade, and then they can only swing for 5Ks, maybe 6Ks if they have an extra Dawn. But the point of that is that now, when you play your White Snake, you've canceled out a bunch of other stuff, and so even while they bottom deck Boodle, you still got a turn of defense. Boodle is also great on turn 2, even if you're going to have 0 Dawn after. Remember that Doflamingo wants to swing for 7K as soon as possible so they can go for the leader effect. If you got your Boodle out, you can do a quick Boodle block for one trash, and then just stay safe until the next turn. And while they do tend to stop running this after the starter deck comes out, you do still need to be aware of the OP07 law. If you have 6 or more cards in your hand, they can use this to make you trash a card. Sounds like another law card. Like I said, worse red purple law. Which I should probably clarify, uh, I don't mean that like Doflamingo is a bad deck, but just that we have to play against it in a similar way that we did to red purple law, but it is less threatening because it can't bottom deck consistently. Whitebeard. Uh, this matchup isn't a big deal. Just try not to waste the big cards like Deathwink early. You're going to need them for the bigger swings later. Smoker. Post starter deck, he plays like a normal black deck, but he does get some non-KO removal. Boodle is fine to play sometime, but you shouldn't put yourself in a position where he's the only thing defending you. Nami. In the mirror, if you don't have a Kaya, Apis, Mr. Hanger, or Pilaf in your hand, Mulligan. If you end up with those in your life, you are going to be at a severe disadvantage. Nami doesn't usually attack in the mirror, so it's okay to be a little bit aggressive and leave yourself at zero dawn. Your goal is just to get to your East Blue draw cards ASAP, so make sure that you're searching with Apis when you can. Once you have Mr. Hanger, your strategy is going to change a little bit. You want to keep enough dawn open to use counter events in your hand, and every turn you're going to use Hanger to get an extra draw. 
Basically, by having Hanger on the field, you force your opponent to attack to remove it, and when they attack, you can use your counter events to mill as much as possible and defend Hanger if you can. Now, if we're in a meta where you need to run these three costs Zeph, things are absolutely going to change. You still use Apis to search, but you're just trying to grab the Zeph instead. Once you get him on the field, you start swinging at life. If they take the life, they might get a temporary advantage if they have a good trigger, but eventually they're going to have to start countering out with events. And every event they use is another four cards milled from your deck, which is going to bring you back ahead. Katakuri. I've talked a bit about the Katakuri matchup in the past, but just to recap, uh, pay attention to how they move your life around, and remember that when they move something to the bottom, it's probably a trigger that they want to trash later. The 10C Big Moms are a problem for us, but it's going to take a little bit before they can get more than one on the field, so you gotta make good use of the early turns to get as much milled as possible. Bello Betty. Yeah, uh, we just kind of auto-lose this, sorry. Uh, it's the direct opposite of her deck. She spams out characters, goes for multiple 8k swings by their third or fourth turn, and while she hasn't been buffed yet, it is still a very tough matchup. All you can really do is be smart about how you counter, but that's something you should be doing in any game. Uh, you swing at their characters once they're rested, and really just do your best to hang in there. <laughs> if you're lucky, you might be able to take that one. Purple Luffy. Post starter deck, Luffy gets a little bit better, but he only gets about half of his total upgrades, with the rest coming in OPO 9. Boodle is fantastic here, but similar to Smoker, he does run one way of dealing with it. The new Usohachi rests characters, so don't make Boodle your only line of defense. Otherwise, he's going to play like a more aggressive version of his old self, and thankfully, he usually doesn't run Magellan anymore. Anel. If Betty was an auto loss, Anel is an auto win. Anel benefits a lot from getting cards from his life, and we just completely deny him that with our playstyle. Anel is going to take some time to get up to 10 Dawn, and then he's going to start dropping threats, but that gives us a solid amount of turns to do some damage, and they don't have access to 10 Mom, so they can't just automatically trash cards from your life. If they decide to take the passive route, so they just pass turn, get their Dawn, pass turn, use that time to build up your hand to the best it can be. Since we aren't running things like Belmare, we don't have a ton of active options to go around, but you can still make it work with things like Apis and Buggy. Remember what we talked about in the General Dawn Tips section. Try not to let your Dawn go to waste. Hody Jones. Yeah, Hody Jones may be a meme deck, but it is specifically good at dealing with metas where there are a lot of counter events. The main problem with Hody is that most other decks don't actually leave Dawn open for that. Unfortunately, we do, which means that Hody is actually an issue for us. Basically, you want to play this normally, but you should be aware that you could, at any time, lose a Dawn or two. So overestimate how much Dawn you need to survive. It is not impossible, but it is similar to the Betty matchup. It is very unfavored for us. Perona. Perona is a great matchup for us. She is slow. She doesn't benefit from KOing our characters, and the only reason I'm bringing her up here is if you're facing the Wano Kuni variant, there are rare occasions where you're going to see the double attack banish Yamato. Since they have no way of giving it rush, we don't have to prepare for it in advance, but if they drop that on the field, you need to start being a little bit more cautious about what attacks you defend. You absolutely, under no circumstances, do not want that double attack banish to go through. That's really going to hurt your chances since they're probably going to trash a trigger. Thankfully, this is a very rare case, and the one time it did happen to me, the other player didn't realize how much of a threat the Yamato was and didn't fully commit all their Dawn to using it. Basically, what you want to do is you want to take life if you need to, but you want to make sure their Banish doesn't hit. So basically, if they attack with other characters, you might let that go through even if you could defend it to make sure you can stop the Yamato swing. Speaking of Yamato, the leader Yamato is actually a little bit rough with the double attack, but it's not impossible. When you mulligan here, you need to make sure that you have at least 4k encounter for 2 Dawn. While you might keep hands without that in other matchups, it is 100% necessary here. If you let the turn 3 8k leader swing go through, you are at a huge disadvantage for the rest of the game. Also, just keep an eye on their Dawn. If they start setting aside 2 Dawn, they're probably planning to go for the Onami banish, so make sure you block that. Raiju. Uh, here's the deal. An experienced Reiju will cause you problems. It is extremely difficult for us to beat that. At the end of the day, they have three very effective tools against us. Pudding, Ichiji, and Judge. However, someone who has not played Reiju for a long time doesn't usually think about Judge's Dawn Minus effect since it's really not that much use in other games. 
You can play around the pudding by keeping your hand size in mind, and you can play around the Ichiji swings if you counter with it in mind, but Judge will permanently keep you down a Dawn, and that is a huge disadvantage. When you see a Reiju deck, you kind of just have to hope they don't know the nuance of their own deck, which sucks, but I'm sorry. Bonnie. 9C Zoro is an issue, but he's not searchable. You can use your Boodles and the Dawn before 9C Zoro comes out to try to get a good lead going. Make sure that you're not taking life unnecessarily early if you can, and you should be okay. On their 7 or 8 Dawn turn, they do like to go for Hody Jones, and it's mostly well known now that he can rest Dawn. Uh, earlier on in different metas, people kind of didn't realize that, but now they kind of have. So plan your defenses with two less Dawn in mind on that turn. Boa. Yeah, you would think Boa would be an issue since she bottom decks, but actually she's not that bad. Uh, she likes to run a bunch of bottom deck events, but there are a lot of Dawn to play, which leaves her with so much less to swing with. Just be careful about what characters you play. Play cards you wouldn't mind getting bottom decked, so for example Kaya, any searcher getting bottom decked is fine. If Body gets bottom decked, just try to get an impel down card below him and then boom, you've got his effect live again. Plus, if you can remember how many cards you bottom decked, uh, I like to wear a ring and do kind of a little finger tap as a reminder in between turns, then you can wrap up the game really cleanly later. You're not allowed to publicly track information that your opponent doesn't know, but Little memory tricks like the ring tap are not cheating. Vegapunk. He is actually kind of an issue for us because he can spam out characters much faster than other decks. Thankfully, he is unable to swing at us with his leader, so that does help a little bit. But basically, you just need to play according to how your opponent acts. You know, what's new, right? If they decide to go passive until they build a board, just go on the offensive and use your dawn aggressively. I'm not saying attack, but I'm saying use things like Pilaf, use Apis, use Buggy, use more Dawn on your turn than you normally would. I think Boodle is pretty nice early as the cards that they run to get rid of him, they're not going to show up until the higher Dawn turns usually. Pudding. Uh, Pudding is Katakuri but with weaker early turns. Everything I said about the Katakuri matchup pretty much also applies here. Kalgara. Kalgara can get a lot of 7k and 8k attackers out quickly so you need to prepare for several 9k swings early. White Snake at the beginning of their attacks can make a big difference but it really depends on how much Dawn they have available can't really do much else, but Boodle can be a good help here, otherwise just play normally. Red Sanji. Red Sanji is upcoming in the premium set, that's the reprint one, uh, and this is the leader, that's the only new card in the set. He's not an issue at all. They are just going to run a bunch of beat sticks and give them rush, so basically this plays like Vivi without the bottom decking and the Sanji leader can attack you. Red Purple Luffy. This is tricky. Uh, they're an aggressive deck, and once they get the Gear 5 Luffy out, that is a big 12k attacker swinging at your face. The only thing I can really add to this is that you can use Boodle when they don't have Newgate out. They can technically run top not to bottom deck, but they don't seem to run that until OPO 9, and even then it's just a tech card, so they might have two copies. Uh, you need to watch how they use their Dawn, though. If they start swinging with every character with no Dawn attached, you can tell that Gear 5 is probably coming. Black Yellow Luffy. Boodle. Boodle, Boodle, Boodle. Boodle block makes a huge difference. It seems like the Western players do prefer a more control-focused Black Yellow Luffy build, but that is slower, so that's fantastic for us. And while they are able to KO Boodle, it is not harder than the aggro version. You can mostly just play normally, but when they boost, if you don't have a blocker, you want to focus more on countering out of the character swings and then taking the boosted leader swings, because they're going to require too much of an investment to stop usually an 11k leader swing. So it's better to take that and stop the other attacks. Mono Black Luffy. Uh, I wanted to include a section here about Luffy, but honestly, he was so bad in the Eastern meta that no one ran him. I, I guess he's been gaining steam in the West, but honestly, I really don't have that much experience against him. I played a little bit against him on the Sim. Using our normal playstyle seemed to be enough, with just a little bit of needing to be careful of the 6k swings. But there's really not a lot I can actually add to this matchup. If you faced off against him, uh, can you let me know how it went in the comments? I'm actually really curious. Okay, let's get into some gameplay. Alright, hello everybody. Let's get started with some gameplay. Now, this first game is going to be up against a Reiju. And Reiju is normally kind of an impossible matchup for Nami if the Reiju knows what they're doing. Thankfully, we are going to be able to notice some habits our opponent has and try to capitalize on those. So something that I didn't probably talk about as much in this video, but I've talked about before, is the psychology of trying to understand your opponents and react to them. Uh, and something that is very important is notice the behavior and how your opponent plays. 
because you're able to then kind of work around that in certain matchups. So what you'll notice will end up happening here, and this is kind of a spoiler, but it's fine. Uh, they are going to end up swinging for 5k first. Every time I notice that they like to swing 5k first. They like going very wide, and I'm going to end up capitalizing on that with things like White Snake. So even when they have the Ichi-G, they were going 5k, so we can kind of work around that. So right here, we see our hand. We've got Buggy, Kaya, Love Love Beam, Mr. One, and Usopp's Rubber Band. Now, that's not a perfect hand. I would really prefer some other things, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And we only have the one trigger in our hand, so you know what? That's fine. So we're going to keep it. We're going second, so we do get the draw. And our opponent is going to go for Germa Alcoco, or uh, what is it? Germa City, whatever. I don't care. Uh, what is it? Oh, Germa Kingdom. Thank you. Okay, I can see it on the screen. Cool. So they're going for Germa Kingdom. Uh, when they play the German Kingdom, you really got to be careful and watch their searches. If they are grabbing EGG, you need to keep that in mind. Because if they've got EGG, at least the base form in hand, you should be expecting for them to play the EGG and swing at you. So they're always going to usually have about, well, not always, but most of the time they're going to have one extra attack than what you see on the board. So I'm going to draw. And right here, I'm going to end up drawing Gum Gum Gavel. And I was actually on my phone for a little bit on this very first turn, so I delayed a tiny bit here, but that's what two times speed is for. So we draw into Gum Gum Gavel, and because I have the Gum Gum Gavel, I know that I have 4k countered with one card. Uh, they could go for the Ichiji play if they'd like. That would be they'd have to go Porsche, Ichiji, then play the Ichiji um, upgraded form. Then they can swing 7k, 5k with leader. Now, with that, I can go Gum Gum Gavel, and I can just drop, like, Mr. One for a 1k counter. So I feel like it's fine for me to leave one Dawn open only and play Kaya here. But instead, I'm actually going to go for Buggy, because I'm looking, okay, well, it'd be even more convenient if I have a 2k counter. And I don't really want to trash anything in my hand. So I look and I see, okay, we've got Deathwink. Fine, I'll grab Deathwink. It's whatever. So now we pass. Same kind of thing. We're still in the same situation. Now, my opponent... I'm expecting the Porsche play. They grab the EGG. I expect that Porsche is a pretty common thing, but they grab Sora with the Germa Kingdom. So I figure that's ah, probably fine there. Maybe they don't have it. We'll see what happens. Worst case scenario. That's what happens. We see the Porsche and I don't actually think they had EGG's um, upgraded form. Yeah, because they just swing the 5k. I'm expecting the 7k swing here still. I check their trash, I see that they don't have EGG in the trash yet. So I'm thinking like, okay, well, probably they're still going to go into the upgraded form. So I drop Usopp's rubber band here, and I'm thinking, okay, I mean, if they go for the upgraded form, I can take it. Uh, I could have technically gone for the Mr. One and then done the whole gavel play after. But at this point, I was like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. So I'm looking at this hand. I have White Snake. I've got Love Love Beam. I've got Gavel. I'm expecting I'm probably going to do Gavel Love Love Beam. So that's three Dawn, which means I can play the Kaya this turn. So that's what I end up doing. I'm going to play the Kaya. And we look at this. I don't expect that I'm going to get a chance to use this Sanji's Peel Off early. So I'm going to end up trashing the Sanji's Peel Off and I believe trashing a Mr. One. Most likely. Yeah. The reason I'm thinking I'm not going to get to use Sanji's Peel Off early is because if I were to go for that, that would be because they are passing, right? They're passing a lot. Uh, and then I'm expecting pudding would be their play that they're going for. And I don't want to overcommit on my hand sets or overcommit. I don't know what the right word is right off the top of my head. Uh, you'd think I would, but I don't. Okay. So we see, okay, they've trashed an HEG now. They must have just top decked that, which means now I can expect they are going to swing 7k, 5k, 5k, and maybe some other stuff as well. So I am waiting to see, do they have another Porsche? Do they have another EGG? They drew into Reiju. So they swing Porsche 5k. This is an easy white snake counter. Um, the difference here though is because I'm going for the white snake, that means I may have to take one hit later. Essentially, it was either I can go Love Love Beam or White Snake. White Snake in this case seems to be the better play. So that's what we're going to end up doing. We draw into another white snake. That's fine. My opponent is going to just play the Raiju and switch into the, yep, switch into Ichiji. So now the best thing we can do is probably just Gum Gum Gavel. Yep, Gum Gum Gavel, and we trash Mr. One. No, we trash Deathwing, because I was trying to see, like, okay, 
what's in our grave we have two other death wings in the deck uh death wing i'm probably going to be using later on so i'm checking and i'm like okay it's fine same thing as with the sanji's peel off kind of it's a lot of dawn so i figure i'm gonna have to use that later so it's okay to trash this first one especially because i notice okay white snake will be a little bit more helpful later but okay i'm gonna swing at the porsche because of course you, you should just swing at 5k characters just to get rid of them most of the time uh, and since I did draw the all-stars, I'm just going to grab Gum Gum Gavel with my Mr. One. That's a pretty easy play to make. And right here, we've got plenty of Dawn. We can go for White Snake, Love Love Beam, and Gavel. It just depends on what we draw into. So they go for the Kaya. They get the upgraded EGG form. So I think they're just trying to grab another EGG. That's fine. They grab Judge. Now, I am going to notice that they grab the Judge. Because Judge is really important. Uh, if your opponent is a good Rage player... They are going to try to be getting up to a judge play because judge is going to cause us major problems later on. I think I already mentioned this in the matchup. So in the matchup part, but it's important to notice that as well. So I see, okay, they've got ETG upgraded for them. They've got one base in their trash. And now I'm just waiting to see what happens. They've got 5k here. So, okay, easy white stay. We're just going to go for the white stay. Boom. And we're drawn to Mr. Hanger. I don't like Mr. Hanger. I think I made that pretty clear in the video, but 1k counter at least. So if they want to do this right here, I can just trash Mr. Hanger. All right, because normally what an opponent will do is if they like to swing like long, long? No, wide. That's the word. If they like to swing wide, they'll go 5k. He'll do white snake. Then the next one is just 6k. So a 1k counter is an easy way to just get out of that. Uh, right here, I'm looking and I see, okay, well, they only have two Dawns. So either way, I will be able to block both. So I'm going to go Love Love Beam first, just to kind of see what are we drawing into. And we draw into a Deathwing, which is pretty nice. So they actually just end up playing the Reiju. It's fine. It doesn't really make a difference on our end. And of course, when we Gum Gum Gavel, you should check what you trash. I trashed an All Stars and a Love Love Beam, which means at this point, I've used two Love Love Beams, two Gavels, and two All Stars. I have one Deathwink in trash, one Deathwink in hand, and one more Deathwink either in my life or in my uh, deck. So you got to keep track of those things. I've used two white snakes as well. Now, uh, looking at counters, I think I didn't use any 2k counters yet. Yeah, so I did draw into the Prince Bellet. That's fine. Prince Bellet is actually kind of the perfect draw when you have just Deathwink in hand because that means you easily can get rid of it and then play your Deathwink. So one good thing here is at this point i have noticed they're swinging a lot of 5k so I'm, I'm pretty happy about that if i have the 2k counter that's one easy clear and then they'll probably swing 5k again so i can then go for the deathwing on that play which is unfortunate i do wish they swung a little bit taller but it makes it so we can possibly win this one so it's fine but they only have three dawn left boom 2k then deathwing to draw into two and we draw into white snake and gum gum gaff so I figure, okay, well, maybe they'll probably swing another 5k. If they do, White Snake. If not, I'll take it. Like, if they were to go for the uh, 10,000 with Ichiji right now, I probably would take it. But if they were going for just the 5k's, which is what they usually like to do, that's easy White Snake bait. And, okay. So now I've drawn in two Gum Gum Ray. Now, if I want to go for the Gum Gum Gavel play, I will have no cards in hand. Which, I don't like that. Um, the problem with having no cards in hand is it reveals a lot of weakness to your opponent that they can capitalize on. So my opponent could then just pass a turn and then I'm only top decking. So I'm going to end up taking this hit, even though I could technically counter out of it. I will take it because I can counter out of the next one if I need to. So boom, and we draw Sanji's peel off, which is actually perfect. So cool. We get our plus two and now I am going to counter out of this. And again, we need to check what we drew with that, or what we milled, sorry. So we milled a Gum Gum Gavel and a Desert Spada, which means I've now used three Gum Gum Gavels. Right, so three Gum Gum Gavels are in trash because I grabbed one with Mr. One. So now I have Mr. One, I have Kaya in hand, and I have my Boodle. So I'm going to just Kaya first because I need a way to extend next turn. So I'm looking for that Deathwink. I do not get the Deathwink, which is a little unfortunate. So instead... I'm thinking, okay, I could play Boodle. Boodle would be one free block. Unless they play a Niji. They have shown me on their board that they have a Niji. So they run Niji in this deck. 
That is why instead I'm going to go for Mr. One, grab Gum Gum Gavel, and then hope that I can draw an extender from my life. That's essentially the plan here. So, of course, we swing at Porsche. It's a 5k a character. You gotta swing at it. And then I just grab my Gum Gum Gavel with Mr. One. Now, like I said, I want to take the hit at some point. But since they're gonna swing 5k, my thought is, well, I could go Boodle. If they remember I have the Gum Gum Gavel in hand, then they might try to capitalize on that. So instead, I just, again, take the hit. Now, all right, now I'm going to go for the Boodle counter because, it's, again, it's 5k. Easy thing. So they know what one of the cards in my hand is, but now just a level up beam, draw what I can, and we draw White Snake. Great, more extension. Beautiful. Now, here, we take it because I'd have to go White Snake, hope I draw something good, and then either Gavel if it's not good, or play the good card. So instead, we have three life. It's worth taking. They still can't make the judge play, so it's fine. And there, White Snake plus Love Love Beam. That way I can draw my two cards and get out of this one. Now, if they want to go for the 9k, which they can here, I could just Gum Gum Gap. However, I don't want to trash either of these cards. So instead, I want to take the hit, but I don't want to let this Dawn go unused. Next turn, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I still need to either go for a pew off because at this point I haven't used that many peel offs so it's either in my life or in my deck or I need to go for a deathwing there's still one more deathwing which means next turn I'm going to need to use at least three dawn so I'm going to make sure instead I go Usopp and I take the hit that way I've used my dawn trash the card and I still am ready for the next turn so that's what we end up doing I think about it for a moment boom and then we draw into uh Mr. Two and Trash a Buggy. So, okay. Now we draw. And again, I'm kind of curious about how many peel offs we have left. Um, I might double check that at some point soon. I think that's what I'm doing here. So we see one. We see two. And now I know, okay, there's either one in life or two in the deck. So easy Kaya play here. Boom. I don't draw into the peel off. So, nope, trashing both. And there's the peel off. So, now I'm like, okay, I have Gavel. I have my last peel off here, or one of my last peel offs. I have maybe one more peel off in life. I don't remember exactly. So we have peel off. We have a Deathwink somewhere. We have Gavel. That's six cards right there. So that's kind of what I'm thinking in my head. And boom, we draw into Deathwink, and now we have game, right? So Gum Gum Gavel is minus two. Deathwink for minus four. We win. Essentially, that is why we are trying to figure this out. Does that, or hmm, maybe I didn't quite explain that last part well, but hopefully you can kind of understand the idea about uh, making sure your Dawn doesn't go unused. That was kind of what I was talking about earlier in the video. Uh, hopefully I've made it kind of clear. It's basically, again, the same idea as Dawn efficiency, but just not wasting efficiency, right? And we draw into our two Apis and that's game. Because I know what's in my trash, I'm able to guess what's in my life, I'm able to know what's probably still in the deck, and then base my plays around that. If I figured, okay, uh, I don't have that many good cards left in the deck, I'm going to need to be able to defend again next turn, then I probably wouldn't have gone for that Usopp play. It really does depend on what is currently happening with your deck. And so I hope that this can be a good example of one, noticing what your opponent is doing, right? Our opponent's swinging 5k a lot, so I'm doing things like White Snake. I'm making sure that I'm planning my hand around that. And also just keeping an eye on your cards and trash, and then being able to work around with that. Let's jump into another game. Okay, so here is another game with exactly what I was talking about before. I'm going in against the Luchi, so I'm going to start my game by playing kind of like I would expect to play against a normal Luchi. What's going to end up happening is my opponent is going to change their behavior, which means I need to react and change mine in a different way. So I start with this opening hand and this hand is not good. I have three triggers in my hand. I have only the Usopp's for counter. I've got Boodle who would just be KO'd in a Luchi match, which is not terrible, but it's not a defense. So I'm looking at that and I'm like, easy mulligan. Nope. Just not having that hand. We 
don't draw a lot better. It's still kind of rough, but, you know, we'll make it work. Uh, we've got the Mr. One, we've got the All-Stars, Buggy, uh, Apis, and Deathwing. So, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, this might be a little bit rough on the first turn. I might have to take some damage, but I draw into a gavel, so that's great. So, okay, cool. We're all right. Now I'm going to go for the Buggy, since I have the gavel, I can defend myself if I need to. So, this is fine. No targets. Unfortunate. But we'll just rearrange some things around. Uh, I believe I go for yeah, I go for it that way. So it's love love beam into love love beam into gavel. That's the general plan with having that uh, bottom decking there. But okay, I'm looking at this. I'm like, all right, I can defend against whatever my opponent does here. I got the 2k counter. If they want to do two 5k swings, I can go for the gavel and then the 2k counter. But they just go for the 8k swing, so that's an easy just gavel boom. And we just check. All right, we dropped an all stars. Two all stars now and Prince Bellwood is gone as well. And I checked their trash just to see what they've dropped. They dropped the Spandine, which is just a little mental note of, oh, okay, they can do the whole Luchi combo later. I draw into my gosh darn Spada, and I'm looking at this hand, and I think, wow, this hand still kind of sucks. Uh, we can kind of work into a Deathwing play a little bit later if we need to, but we don't have the Dawn for it yet. It's definitely too early for that. So I'm kind of hoping I can just use Spada, Apis, and Gavel to kind of uh, BS my way through this next turn. Uh, thankfully, they go for the Luchi play first, and I expected that they would swing 6k there, and then I could go for the Spada. But you'll notice that they don't swing, which I thought was a little bit weird. I'm like, okay. So that's a little different than normal, but that gives me some time to fix up my hand. So okay, I draw, I pass. And... You're going to notice that they're switching into a more passive form to try to build up their board first. They just play Jack, they pass, and I'm like, oh. Okay, so they're just going to be a little passive. All right, I drew into my peel off. I'm going to use peel off. And then, okay, I've got an okay hand here. I'll just build things up and I'll wait till they actually are ready to start swinging. Unfortunately, I have forgotten that Isho is a thing. And Isho with me having over six cards in hand means he gets to discard two and you'll see he discarded the spada and the deathwing which is not the end of the world but now i have to kind of keep a mental note of okay uh isho might be the thing he's trying to work towards that's not the biggest deal in the world i can deal with that but it just means i don't want to have too many like extra cards in hand i could have gone for the apis play here which would put me under the isho value However, I'm looking at that and I'm like, okay, Isho is a tech card. Luchi doesn't usually play four. Usually they play, I believe, two, maybe three. And I really don't want to trash anything in this hand. This hand is fantastic. So I'm going to pass. If he has the Isho, he has the Isho. I'll take it, whatever. But I'm just thinking, okay, I should keep this for later. These are all extremely good cards. And I'm just going to have to wait. And they go for the Jack and I think they just pass as well. So, all right, fine, whatever. We draw into my uh, Usopp's rubber band, and at this point, okay, I've got two things I can trash. I'm going to end up trashing White Snake because of the Dawn efficiency. So White Snake, two Dawn for one card, great, but not as good as the Usopp's rubber bands in my hand. The reason why the Dawn efficiency is going to be important here is if my opponent is going passive, that means they're going to be waiting to strike me until they have a lot of big hitters which means I am going to be a little bit stressed about Dawn later, which is why I'm thinking, okay, Dawn efficiency, I'm going to trash that, and I'm going to trash Love Love Beam. Because as much as those are great cards, I need to be focusing on the mill. And I look at that, I'm like, okay, I could draw my Kaya here, and then if I do draw the Kaya, then I can draw whatever and just trash it. However, I, again, I don't have cards I really want to trash in my hand, so I'm going to go for the peel off, and I'm going to play it a little bit risky. It's fine. I'm going to play get up to six cards again i don't love that but all right whatever i'm gonna play my buggy and i'm looking at this and i'm like okay okay this is fine i can grab my all-stars by grabbing all-stars now i have one dummy target if he does play the isho or i could just go for gavel later with that so that's what i'm gonna end up doing i'm gonna save the 2k counter prince bellet for later and we are left with five dawn now Sometimes opponents will start swinging once you they think you've overextended. Uh, my opponent here, I believe, does not. I think that they are still being pretty passive. Oh, nope, they do start swinging a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to gavel. 
boom that does help me a little bit because that gets the cards out of my hand and now that they're gonna swing i will take that because fine i'm not gonna overdo it and now i'm looking at it, i'm like okay well i still need to kind of get myself close to six cards at least maybe a little bit lower so i'm gonna drop the usops and my white snake just get that extra dawn out there and then whatever i'll take a hit fine and i draw into my gavel so i'm looking at this i'm like this is a pretty decent hand now uh i'm gonna of course just go for a peel off here and i'm draw drawn to mr hanger i could play mr hanger but again there's not really any real reason to and i'm just gonna be trying to check okay well how many cards are left in the deck there are 16 cards left i have seven dawn all right i can drop deathwink with a gavel I can drop another character with a gavel and then I can play into a Deathwing play. So that is going to be six cards out of my out of my deck with this turn if they start swinging again, which means, OK, cool. I have 10 cards left minus anything for drawing and I still have three life. Now I'm just going through. I'm just checking. All right. Do I have all stars? I have one all stars left, so it might be in life, might be in the deck. I just have to kind of keep that in mind. But my opponent is going to do something very stupid here, and they are going to attach their Dawn first. Never do that. Never, 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 no matter what deck you're playing, do that. Because if I have White Snake here, I could really have screwed them over. Thankfully for them, I don't. But knowing that I'm going to be hit with a bunch of 9Ks means that, okay, I'll just plan out and do Gavel plus a 1K. Boom. And we're fine. And then again, I'm checking, okay, I dropped all stars with that, which means I now have zero all stars left in deck or life, which means that's not going to be a trigger later. Now, again, just going to do the 9k, so gavel plus the 2k counter in my hand, and now I'm ready for my Deathwing play, which I'm going to make right there. Now, I've got my love love beam, I've got my gavel. Now, if my opponent wants to swing 9k here, which they do, I should just take it, uh, I could go for the love love beam and hope that I get a character and drop it, but it's not really worth the risk when I've got three life right here. So I just take it and ooh, I don't want to counter out with Kaya. So I'm actually going to take this one too. And again, I draw into a Kaya from my life. So that's like, okay, well, that's good and bad. It's good because we're in the end game. It's bad because now I kind of think I have to take this next hit. I see. Okay. I've got 10 cards in life or 10 cards in uh, deck. I am going to go for the love love beam here. It'll give me the draw. I'm still going to have to take the life. But the point being that I don't want to waste that two dawn again because we're in the end game. And I draw into snake dance with like whatever. That's fine. And I have the gum gum rain. Now gum gum rain's trigger would let you send a Kaya back to your hand. I'm going to use it to send either buggy or Apis. And I'm looking at my gosh darn I think I believe I do this first, but I probably should have checked my trash before I did that. Afterwards, I'm going to then count how many uh, targets I have left in my deck. Now, first, of course, I'm going to Kaya. Just if I need to drop the buggy, I need to drop the buggy, whatever. But I don't need to. I drop Desert Spot a Snake Dance. They're not going to mill me cards at this point, so it's fine. I have two more Kayas. I need a way to get two cards out of the deck or one card with buggy and one card with another event so that's what i'm thinking right now i'm looking at this and i'm like okay i have my gavel so technically i think i already have one at this point but i'm just thinking like okay well is there a target there was i looked and i saw okay i have my prince bellet in this version i'm running two two bellets one mr two that's just because that's what i had at the time uh but I prefer the, for the card to just switch it to Mr. 2 because I like Mr. 2 more. But anyway, I saw that there was one Bellet in my trash, which means the other one's in the deck. So I figure, okay, I'll do Buggy. I get at least one card and whatever. I'll grab the Mr. 1. Doesn't really matter. And boom, we've won. So now I'm like, okay, I've got one card and one in the deck. It's game. But the whole point of this being one I wanted to show you guys is that when your opponent is changing the way they play, you have to also adjust around them. And I feel like I really should have put more of a emphasis on the psychology part in this video, but I have already covered it. Um, I probably will put the timestamp up on the last gameplay section, but let's go ahead, jump into one more game uh, and hopefully we can get another good one. All right. So our final game is up against a Katakuri. So I just finished this one. Of course, I'm going second and I get 
the most atrocious hand I possibly could have gotten. Uh, maybe if I had a couple more all-stars in hand, but obviously mulligan this right away. No, God, no, no, please. Thank you. No. So we get white snake, white snake. We've got uh, Desert Spada, we've got Mr. One, and we've got Boodle. Boodle is actually not bad in the Katakuri matchup later because they're gonna have the gosh darn Ten Mom, which has 12k attack. And Boodle, Boodle, bless his heart, he's got his little dog Choo Choo, and he just holds Choo Choo up the Big Mom, and Big Mom goes for the this cow, 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 high cow, God, what well, fuck was the word? Ikoku. There we go. Ikoku sovereignty. Yeah, that one. And Choo Choo like gosh darn soldier he is he tanks it so obviously this is not the greatest hand i could have had uh i'm looking at this though and i'm like okay if he goes for the 8k swing i'm actually in some trouble here i might have to just take it so i'm thinking all right well you know what i could play boodle but it's better for me to pass just in case and thankfully he does not go for the 8k swing he goes for actually 9k swing because it's katakuri he just goes for the nami onami banish play and i'm like oh okay then 1k counter plus Desert Spada. Let's see if we can get something better for our hand. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, yeah, no, none of that's going to help me right now. So we're going to put that guy on the bottom. All stars under the Usopp so we can mill it later. And I'm just going to hope that I draw a better thing after that. So I do that. And of course, I'm going to drop my gosh darn Mr. One for counter because I'm thinking maybe I need to search for a 2k counter or Deathwink later. I draw Kaya. Okay, I'll play Kaya. Why not? And we have peel off and Apis. And I'm like, ooh, I can't peel off right now. Uh, if I go for the Apis play, there's not a lot that I want to drop. So what I'm going to end up doing instead is I am going to drop Apis and I believe Buggy. Then I'm going to play Boodle and I'm going to hope that he does not have the Gadatsu in hand. If he does have the Gadatsu, Boodle gets KO'd and I'm going to take a life. That would be unfortunate, but I'm just going to try for that because that's kind of the best thing I can do here. Unfortunately, he does have the Gadatsu, which means I'm going to have to take a life. The reason I wanted to keep the peel off in hand that badly is because our hand was not in a very good position to extend later. We were kind of just relying on things like the white snakes to draw something good from the top of the deck, which means I need a way to replenish my hand at this point and so peel off is a bit higher priority so all right whatever i'm gonna take it thankfully we trigger so that's cool and i'm going to just drop the all stars and grab my usopp so we're at 32 cards in the deck we get deathwink that's interesting to me uh i cannot use deathwink yet but i'm gonna keep that in mind for maybe the turn after this turn but of course because I have six Dawn, I don't feel comfortable going for the peel off right now. I would have to draw into Gavel from the peel off. That's why I passed the turn. I have six Dawn, so I'm going to be able to go White Snake, White Snake, Usopp, or maybe Love Love Beam if I draw into that. So that's kind of my thought right here. One other little bonus. I didn't check the username, but I had just played a Katakuri the turn be the game before this, where someone whoever it was was going for 5k swings a lot so i'm like okay well white snake might be a little bit more helpful here and i don't know if it was the same person i would have to check you know what we're gonna check my stats actually i'm gonna find out is it the same person yeah it is the same person okay <laughs> so i could have just checked during the thing but it's all right so anyway we have the same person here so i'm figuring okay white snake is gonna be a little bit more of an important factor uh in this and okay cool they went for the 5k swing just to play the Nami instead. I'm going to go for my gosh darn Usopp here. And I drop a white snake, whatever. Uh, I could have technically, I think, gone for the other white snake. But again, I was thinking, okay, this guy likes to swing a lot of low cost cards or low uh, power cards. So white snake will help me later. And I'm looking, okay, I don't have anything too crazy. No gavels, so I can't really grab Mr. One uh, gavel or anything like that. So, all right, whatever. And I'm thinking, okay, do I want to go for the buggy? Is there any card that would actually be really helpful for me if I went for the buggy play? I'm thinking maybe 2k counter, but if I were to grab an all-stars, uh, all-stars is not really going to do much for me right now. And so if I'm just looking at my trash, not really anything I can think of that I would actually need. So I'm actually not going to go for the buggy search this turn. 
Instead, I'm just going to attack the Onami. Just get rid of a body. That's great. And I'm hoping that with maybe White Snake, with Love Love Beam, I'll be able to draw into something good. Maybe a Gavel would be fantastic here. But they're just going to drop bodies. I'm going to go for my White Snake. Boom. And I have Usopp. Cool. They go for 7k. I'm Usopping. I drop Pilaf and I'm like, ugh. Don't love that, but fine. Whatever. And they go for the gosh darn 7k swing. Now, I have my Love Love Beam. But I cannot use it if I have five cards in hand because I won't get the draw. So I'm going to counter one, then play Love Love Beam, which means I'll have three cards left in hand. Love Love Beam gives me the draw then. Minor sequencing things, things that you probably already know at this point, but things to kind of think about uh, as you're playing the game. So I draw into another Love Love Beam. That's cool. Uh, and then I draw into Gavel and I'm like, okay, yeah, we can definitely work with this. This is great. I'm going to swing at Nami just because 5k attacker. Might as well just try to get rid of it. Uh, and then my opponent plays the gosh darn 10 mom. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. They dropped a Sanji's peel off of my life. So no trigger there. But we're just going to go for the gavel. I could technically go for the Mr. One play here. That would have been fine as well. But I want to gavel just to make sure that that gets out of my hand. And maybe I might need the Mr. One to grab a gavel if my opponent passes the turn basically i want to keep that until the last possible moment in case they just pass you never know so i see oh wow okay my hand is pretty great now uh looking at this my opponent can swing to 6ks and this 5k so i am seeing that they're continually swinging now i think okay it's probably fine for me to drop the mr one they're gonna swing another 2k i'm gonna go for that and you can see that I am trying to adjust around this opponent because I know that they're swinging with all their characters. I know that it's fine to space out my counter. If I thought that they were going to just swing once, realize, oh, this is not working and pass, then I would have dropped a bunch of different cards at the same time and then gone for the death swing play. But because I know that they're spacing this out, it's fine for me to space mine as well. So, okay, Kaya, I look and I draw, ooh, not anything great. I see I have the Apis and I'm like, I could technically Apis if I can get a peel off. And I'm looking, I see, okay, one peel off and trash, two peel off and trash, three peel off and trash. Ooh, no. Apis will not be likely to get me my peel off with 15 cards left in the, de in the deck. So I'm dropping that. And do I keep Mr. Hanger? I think I do. It did take me a little bit to try to figure out what I wanted to do here. Yeah, so I keep Mr. Hanger and I keep Gavel. And I'm not going to play Mr. Hanger yet because if I were to do that, then I'm going to lose Gavel. So I'm thinking, okay, fine. I'm going to have to take a hit and just hope my life has something good. It does. It has a draw to trigger. And we're going to just drop the All-Stars. But still nothing that can extend, so I probably still need to take this next hit. But I decide, nah, we're dropping Mr. Hanger instead. And... Now I'm definitely taking this hit. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And I'm like, all right, White Snake, I got an extension. Cool. We're going to White Snake here. And I see I've got the Love Love Beam. Uh, I do expect that my opponent is going to swing with Leader, so I'm not going for the Love Love Beam here. Yep, there's the Leader swing. 8k. And then, boom, we draw into Boodle. Okay, Boodle would be helpful versus the 10 Mom. I am probably going to have to take 10 Mom pretty soon. And that is a great top deck right there. Death Wink boodle beautiful i'm gonna play boodle after of course i swing at the nami and then i've got the death swing for later now no matter what they swing at me with i'm not gonna take it i'm just gonna go for the death wink if they swung with me with the uh, 10 mom i would have blocked it there but okay i get Usopp, i get prince bellet i could technically drop both of those and block this but that would be stupid because then i'd have no cards in hand so we take it it is a trigger and we draw Gavel and all starts. So I'm like, all right, this is pretty good. I think we have game at this point. Yeah, we have game. Um, looking at the cards left in deck, I have four cards left in deck. So this is what I end up doing. I'm going to block with Boodle. I'm going to use Gum Gum, Gavel, and I'm going to use Usopp's Rubber Band. That's going to drop three cards. Boodle gets KO'd. That's four. So right here, boom. Gavel does only work on the leader, by the way, just so you guys know. Uh, I figure probably you guys can't know that because you can read the card, but some people forget about that. So just that's the reason I target the leader there, not not the uh, Boodle. 
So just keep that in mind for later. But anyway, that is going to be the game. So let's go ahead and jump out to the outro. And hopefully this was nice and uh, helpful, like a teaching experience. It's a 360 virtual experience. I tried to focus on only discussing the new stuff, and this is still 13 pages. <laughs> My god. This is why I have a YouTube channel, so I can just rant about the things I like like this. <laughs> anyway, if you're looking for more info about Nami, uh, check out these videos with the timestamps I'm showing on the screen. Uh, if I haven't answered something in this video, feel free to leave me a comment. I'm happy to answer it. Also, I would really recommend checking out this Google Doc from Foster Donson. It is for OPO7, but it is a very comprehensive guide to Nami, and the author clearly has a nuanced understanding of her, which is something I don't say lightly. It is very informative, and I really can't praise that enough. It's in the description, and I'm going to make sure it's put near the top of the links, so really, make sure you're looking at that. Are you looking? I'll know if you aren't. I'm like Santa. You just be good, or you're going to find coal under your pillow, okay? Oh, also I got a lot of requests to show the full deck on screen in the pudding video, so here's that. And since we're here, this is what I've been using in OPO9. Uh, there may be some minor changes by the time I get to the OPO9 video, but so far this has felt pretty good. Uh, with all that being said, my name is Waffles the Asian Yen Bear, and the next video might be Bonnie. I I've been doing research on her, and she's fun, but I haven't 100% settled on it yet. So, until then, hope you have a good day, a good week, a good life. Goodbye.